It's Platt, and today I ask the question, peppermint candy, will it ferment? That's next. All right, so I thought today we'd do a fun little experiment. Uh, I was recently in the grocery store and had to kind of cut through, and I cut through the candy aisle. And I just stopped halfway through the aisle, and I kind of looked around, I'm like, there's a lot of potential here. Um, I, I, I've done a similar experiment with Jolly Ranchers before. I'll leave a link down below to that video where I just wanted to see if you can make alcohol from Jolly Ranchers. This is before I'd started this Will It Ferment series. And we got, we, we produced some alcohol. It was a very low alcohol brew, two and a half, three percent at best. I uh, just didn't put enough Jolly Ranchers. First time I'd really tried an experiment like that. But like I said, I was cutting through the candy aisle, and it just really dawned on me. Man, there's a lot of potential here. I've spent a lot of time, you know, in the juice aisle. You know, made different ciders and meads and stuff like that. I've spent, you know, time with the fruits and stuff and spices for different brews or whatever. But I just kind of walked through the candy aisle, and like I said, I thought, man, there's a lot of potential here. Basically, because that aisle is full of sugar, which that's what we need, you know, for our yeast at the end of the day. So there's that. And there's also just a ton of flavors. That was another thing that kind of piqued my interest. I'm like, well, well man, can I utilize these flavors? You know, because in the candy aisle, there's flavors you just don't find anywhere in the universe, pretty much. So I really got the old brain thinking. So what I did was just grab a couple of cheap bags of peppermint candy. Uh, I'm really interested to see how much the peppermint flavor carries through on this little experiment. But uh, just picked up a couple of bags of cheap peppermint candy and thought, let's see if it works. Uh, so real quick, the premise behind this brew, basically when I grabbed the peppermint candies, I just looked at them like, that's sugar. I've got two 10 ounce bags of peppermint candy, comes out to a pound and a quarter. Uh, we, as we've seen in other videos, uh, especially my video where we made uh, alcohol from just sugar and water, a pound of sugar, regular table sugar is roughly going to give you 40, low 40s in gravity points. So I thought I'd go a little bit higher here. We got a pound and a quarter. I'm looking at this basically as just raw sugar. Um, I know there's some flavoring in there and there's some other ingredients. So we'll, we'll get into that. But just kind of looked at this as sugar. And uh, so we're going to have a pound and a quarter of sugar. And that that is more than enough to get... Uh, again, depending on the gravity reading, uh, should be more than enough to produce uh, some alcohol. So I thought that was good. Uh, real quick, let's talk about those ingredients because as, as we've gone through this series, we realized we need to read labels because it's those preservatives we're trying to dodge or there are certain things we need to dodge to make sure our yeast do their job produce the alcohol we want. So looking at the list of ingredients, pretty simple. Sugar, which is good for us. Corn syrup, which is not good for us in the health sort of way, but it's good for us in the brewing sort of way. Our yeast have no problem with corn syrup. Peppermint oil. That one, um, a good example of oils in, in fermentation is, like if you've had any of these uh, peanut butter beers, like kind of a trendy, these chocolate peanut butter beers. The oil in peanuts sometimes are you know kind of makes it tough for head formation in, in certain beers and that's why some of those beers have tried uh aren't really effervescence don't hold a head or whatever but this experiment we're not worried about holding a head we're not going to have a head uh we won't even carbonate this really we're just producing alcohol and see what kind of what flavor we get so the peppermint oil i don't think would be a problem as in, in this context, uh, we have red food coloring, number 40. If you remember the video where we uh, fermented sports drink, there was yellow food coloring, number five, or what it was. Still came out fine. We should be fine here. The last ingredient, this might be uh, the stickler, titanium dioxide. And in here it notes that it's for color. Now, I did a little research on titanium dioxide, and it is used in several di different foods. Uh, it's used in dairy products, candies, uh, frosting, and uh, powder for powdered donuts. Basically, for th those purposes, basically makes your whiters white. It's kind of like 
bleach and laundry <laughs> to a certain extent. Uh, it makes your wires white. Um, again, nothing offhand that tells me this would affect fermentation. I did do a little more research, and some people use this as almost like a, a, a part of a coating or a mixture to coat fruits to keep them from going from ripe to rotten. Uh, when a fruit, again, is ripening and then moves into the rotting stage, it will produce certain gases. The titanium dioxide inhibits those gases. Now, those gases aren't CO2. That's the gas we're worried about. So, again, I don't see anything that should prohibit fermentation, but that's why we're doing the experiment. One other thing on titanium dioxide, there is, if you search the internet for titanium dioxide, there are some articles and stuff that kind of, wonder if there's a potential cancer risk or whatever, but there's nothing really uh, firm about it. The FDA still approves the use, obviously, in smaller doses or whatever, but it's it's very similar to, if you remember my uh, beef jerky, well, my first beef jerky video, I talked about not using liquid smoke because of the similar controversy. It's FDA approved, uh, but some people are worried about carcinogens. There's a slight bit more evidence on that than this. So that's why on this one I said, all right, we'll use it in the liquid smoke. I said no, but just want to let you know that that's out there. So here's how our little experiment's going to go because we're in candy form. I really can't do a high drama reading like this. I'm going to unpack this candy. I've got my one gallon fermenter, which I've already uh, sanitized. I'm going to fill it with water. We're going to put the candy in. We're going to let, let it dissolve overnight. And then tomorrow I'll come back. We'll do a gravity reading, so see where we start, and then come back. Add our yeast nutrient pitcher yeast and see if it will ferment. So I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, so it's the next morning. Uh, we let this sit overnight. Uh, one thing, I had to stir it a couple times because it had a lot of stuff settling. What a bright pink color. Holy cow. And I'm, the smell is unbelievable. It uh, smells like Christmas. So let's go ahead and do our gravity reading. See, uh, see where we're at. I highly, highly doubt we need to add sugar, but let's see where we're at. All right, we're definitely not going to need sugar. We're going to come in at 1.070. We should get somewhere in the mid sevens to eight uh, alcohol by volume, uh, percentage wise. Uh, that's pretty good. We're definitely not going to need to add sugar. Um, all we need to do now is we'll go ahead and add our yeast and our yeast nutrient. Uh, I use a standard uh, SAF ale, ESO5, a standard ale yeast and all these experiments. And I always do add yeast nutrient. That's the only little trick. Uh, at uh, 1.070, we probably needed just to help it process that much sugar because that's a... That's a decent uh, gravity reading. We might end up actually getting a little over eight now to think about it. But uh, So let me go ahead and pitch the uh, yeast and yeast nutrient, and we'll come back in about 24 hours and see if we got any bubbles. All right, so we're about 24 hours in. You can see our airlock. We're getting uh, some air pressure. We have some bubbles up top, so it looks like we have fermentation. So we'll come back at the end of the week and check our gravity. All right, gang, so it's been about one week. Um, I still appear, it still appears like we have a, a somewhat active fermentation um, due to my airlocks action or whatever. But like I said, it's been about a week, so I want to go ahead and do a gravity reading, kind of see where we're at. Um, we started off at 1.070 on our gravity. Let's see what we got here. All right, we appear not to be still have a good bit of way to go on fermentation we're at about 1.040 doing some rough math that gets us to close to four percent so we did find out that it will ferment we did answer that question we should probably still let this ferment a little longer though but one week we're at around four percent uh that'll do in a pinch i guess the next question now is what does it taste like uh i can tell you when I opened the container to get the sample, tons and tons of that peppermint smell. So I got a feeling that it's going to translate the flavor. But let's go ahead and see what we got. Color-wise, 
wise, it kind of reminds me of the watermelon wine I made a couple years back. Oh yeah, plenty of plenty of peppermint. Let's give it a try. Hmm. A little drier than I thought, especially since it's not a completed fermentation. Um actually got a nice kind of crisp body so far. The peppermint doesn't truly translate over flavor-wise. Um, yeah, this almost tastes like peppermint water to a certain extent. Um, at 4%, you're not going to get any kind of alcohol burn or whatever. Um, it's very drinkable, but very, very kind of light, actually, on the palate. Uh, it'll be interesting to see... I'm going to go ahead and let this ferment out for maybe another week now. So let's ferment out, see where, you know, see, I probably can get another couple percents alcohol out of it. Uh, but flavor-wise, um, not bad, not bad. Uh, one thing I do note that uh, some of these other uh, things I fermented, you do pick up the yeast and fermentation, especially in a still active fermentation when you try. But there's really no yeast in this flavor wise as far as like I said it's probably the softest thing on the palate I've, we've done so far um not bad well i hope you like this video if you did please subscribe down below also please like the video because it lets youtube know we're putting out good content if you have any questions comments concerns or even suggestions for this series you can leave them in the comment section or you can always find me on the twitter page well until next time bottoms up